What am I trying to say? I don't know. What's gonna burn up first? <laughs> my house or my shop? Let's try that again. So, I'm gonna open the door so I don't die. It is a frigid six degrees Fahrenheit today. It's been like this for basically two weeks now. Expected to be like this for like another two weeks. Our days are about 20 degrees Fahrenheit. Our nights are about five degrees Fahrenheit. Um, too cold to really do a lot outside. We just feed the animals, make sure everybody's good, take care of the chores. As far as projects, we're doing them all more inside. We're gonna stick to the table that we've been working on. Um, it is inside, but it's in the shop. It's like maybe five degrees warmer in there at the most. And I don't have a shop that's heated, so we're gonna make do with what we got. freezing cold outside lately and so I haven't wanted to come out here but I did anyway what am I trying to say I don't know I just spent forever dragging this thing out it has wheels on it but they don't roll on the gravel the floor is just gravel so that just digs in and pulls the gravel up with it so it's kind of hard to move around got it pulled out um, I'm gonna have to make a few adjustments still I think to make everything pass through here just fine I also got to adjust the, I got to adjust the fence on it so that it's square and then we can start passing these through. I'm just gonna pass them on the sides first and then we may or may not pass them through the table saw or I'll just flip them over and pass them through on that. Um, either way, we're getting ready to clean up the edges of them so I can glue them all together. And then for the table top, I'm not sure exactly how I'm gonna do it yet. I will either come through with a hand planer or make a jig for a um, router that I can just take off the top of it, make it all flat. We're gonna give this a try with just a scrap. This is something we pulled off another project. We don't need any more. Um, I'm gonna give it a try on that, see how it goes. This thing is old and it pulls a lot of amps to start. So where we've got this on essentially 150 foot extension cord back to the house, it may not have enough to crank over, especially as cold as it is. When it's warm, it does okay, but when it's cold, not so much. So, we're gonna give it a try, see how it goes, negative five degrees Fahrenheit. That was a failure. I think it's just too dang cold. I can run it without the belt on. That motor is made to pull 8.4 amps at an ambient temperature of 40 degrees Celsius. Is that what, 40 degrees Celsius, that's hot. I don't know what the markings on that thing. It says 40 degrees Celsius, 8.4 amps. Got a 150 foot extension cord on a 15 amp breaker. Somebody tell me, what's gonna burn up first? <laughs> my house or my shop? We're gonna give it a break for tonight. Wait till it warms up. It's supposed to be about the same temperature. During the days, we're about 25. At night, we're about negative one to two degrees Fahrenheit. Is that like negative 28 Celsius? Something like, I don't know what Celsius. It's cold. So we're gonna wait till it's warm. We might try it during the day. Um, when it's a little warmer, see if that gets it cranking over, or we might be just bagging this one until spring. 
For tonight, just gotta get firewood one more time. We're heading in. sunshine today but it's not necessarily warm it's still only like 20 degrees Fahrenheit but we're gonna try this joiner one more time and see if the warmth will help that motor get turned over closer a little bit better but it still just doesn't have enough power it seems to get that thing to turn over once I pull the belt off it runs just great I don't have any problems then but as soon as I put that belt on it's just got too much tension in it somewhere that it can't turn that motor over I'm gonna try shutting the lights off in here so it'll be in the dark but I'm gonna shut the lights off and see if that extra power we get from not having the lights to run off the same extension cord 150 feet back to the house so, not ideal, but we're just trying to figure out how to make this thing run for now. Get this job done. I'm just trying to run it here for a few minutes. Um, I can already start to smell some heat coming off that motor. Much. That's what I'm worried about is I'm just gonna burn the motor up. Um, it's not pulling enough power. My options I think are to either move it back closer to the house, which would be outside in the freezing, freezing cold, and the snow. Um, it's gonna be kind of hard to do that. Or to get a thicker gauge wire, which would help. I don't have one, so that's kind of not an option. The other option is to maybe run it off a generator which I do have, but is not currently running. Probably the easiest option that I'll probably do is borrow one from a friend who has a woodworking shop and his is better than mine anyway. Um, I might give him a call and see if he'll let me just come borrow it and we'll just get it done real fast. Now that I've had a moment to think about this, we are gonna make a little course correction here. Change directions a little bit. I have been wanting to work on this generator for several years now. We've had it for at least six years and it's never run. My in-laws gave it to me because they upgraded and now it needs to be cleaned out. So. So the main reason that I've decided to change course and work on this instead of continuing with the table is simply because I feel like this is a better priority. This generator we have kept as an emergency backup power source, which is useless to us if it doesn't work. So beyond being able to run this jointer with it, it'll also be able to run most of our house. Um, it's a 5,000 watt generator decent size to be able to run a lot of things, at least keep our freezers going so we don't lose all of our food 
if something were to happen in the summer. Um, you never know what might happen, so better to be prepared than to lose all of our food. So I'm gonna get this generator up and going. First thing I gotta do is find some tools. Always. Well, I opened up the gas tank just to look and see if there's any specific tools I needed um, to drain this. Not that I would drain it out of the gas tank, but I don't know. I just peeked in there and turns out there's no gas in it. I thought I was gonna have to drain all the gas. Um, I don't know what that means. I swear there was gas in there the last time I looked, but maybe I'm just an idiot and it just needs gas the whole time. So I'm gonna grab a couple tools just in case, but we are going to just throw some gas in there and see what happens. So I pulled the air filter off. It does need to be replaced and probably should change the oil in the engine, but we're gonna see if it'll crank over at least now that it's got some gas in it. Um, if I can get it to start, that would be awesome. I won't run it long until I get that air filter and the oil changed, but we're ready to go. I sprayed some carb cleaner into the air intake, um, cleaned a little bit out, not much, didn't seem like it was dirty at all in there. So I'm hoping that it will just take off. Well, that didn't work, so I guess we're back to doing the full carb cleaning on it. But first, I have a basketball game to go to. Lydia, our nine-year-old, is playing basketball in just a few minutes, so I gotta leave right now. When I get back, we'll get into this. Maybe dark outside, though. See a little change in light right there. And we're back! See? It's dark outside. We are back to work on this generator. We went to our basketball game. We watched some Olympics, had some dinner, had a great time. Now it's time to see if we can get this generator working. I am going to pull off the air filter on the generator and spray some, it's not starter fluid, it's actually carb cleaner, I don't have any starter fluid, but I'm gonna spray some of that in where the air filter is, see if we can get this to run for just a second because I wanna make sure that this is not just the spark plug that's not working. If we can get it to turn over with the starter fluid, then we know it's just the fuel coming in is our problem, um, unless it runs. Sometimes when you crank it up with some starter fluid, it'll start sucking fuel faster and it'll take off going. So we'll see what happens. We're gonna try it with the carb cleaner, see how it goes. Well, that was good to see. Um, it'd be nice if it just ran, but obviously not gonna happen. We are going to have to pull apart this carb and clean it out, as well as um, I'll check the fuel lines and the fuel filter to make sure it's running, or yeah, flowing. There's also a valve on the fuel line. Um, I don't know which way is on and off. I don't have a manual for this, so we're gonna fiddle with that too and figure out which way makes it flow once we get everything pulled apart. And that way we can hopefully get it running here in just a second. Should be pretty easy now that I know what's going on with it. We got everything cleaned up. Oop. There we go. We got everything cleaned up in that carb. We, the fuel line was blocked. Got that moving fluid through it, fuel through it, and now we're ready to try again. Um, I'm slightly covered in gas. The ground is slightly covered in gas, and I'm going to start an engine. That's a bad combination. The smart thing would be to go inside and wait till tomorrow. 
but what's the point in that? So we're gonna start it up and see if we can actually run for a minute. We got it to run for a few minutes. I mean, it was like maybe 30 seconds, then it kicked back off. And now it won't run unless I put the carb cleaner in it. That first pull though, took right off. That was purely the gas that was in there. There was no carb cleaner in that. Now I gotta go back and think about it for a minute. because I don't know why it won't run now. It's obviously not getting fuel to it for some reason. Um, might have to pull this carburetor apart again and figure it out. So for tonight, I'm gonna have to be done, but in a couple days, I'm going to get back out here and we'll get this going again. I am bound and determined to get this thing running so that we can hook it up to the house if need be and so I can get this joiner to run and get this table finished. Hello. I've been a little bit missing in action lately. There's good reason for that. Um, I've been really busy. <laughs> That's probably not a good excuse. Anyway. So I wanted to do some video today to catch up on things. Um, first of all, I have been busy. I, usually in the winters, I teach ski school at our local resort. That's about a half hour drive from here. And I teach skiing and snowboard lessons. But since I'm pregnant this year, for some reason they don't want me to teach. But they've been really gracious and let me work in the office answering phones and setting up lessons. So I've still been working two to three days a week for the last month, month and a half. So that's been really busy. And also I am 34 weeks pregnant tomorrow, I think. There she is. So Barrett and the kids have been really good for the most part, um, doing all of the animal chores and hauling wood so I don't have to. But part of farm life is that things happen. So some days Barrett just can't get out there to feed animals before he has to get to work or something. So I'm gonna bring you along with me today while I do some animal chores. I waited a little while for the, it was really foggy this morning. So the sun is shining. It should be pretty nice out there. And I'm just gonna do some quick animal chores and you can see how it is when you're 34 weeks pregnant. They still have to be fed. Mommy, the, mommy, I just stepped in some water. Oh dear, step on the towel. Somebody put the rabbit waters in there. Hey, mommy, that, that rabbit food is really yucky. It's really yucky. getting us all ready to go out to do chores than it is to do the chores. Little update on our rabbits. Uh, we actually had a lady from another part of the state getting back into breeding rabbits so she wanted a whole bunch to start a whole rabbitry. So she came through a couple weeks ago and bought nine of our rabbits which was a huge blessing for us because we've been feeding way too many rabbits and haven't had the time 
and it's been too cold to butcher them. So we're really grateful that she came and bought a bunch. So now we are down to six. Six rabbits. Bonnie is our main breeding doe and we just bred her. She has been amazing doe. She's had lots of litters. Sail on off the radar <laughs> Adventure away from this Trouble, it will find you It's behind you It always is Unfold from my mind, I don't uh -huh. want you near If you killed me with kindness, I'd no longer feel you here You fall in for someone new A feathered heart forgets everything That's Gary, he's in the cow pen right now but when we're not out here, he comes out these slats and eats all the hay. He's supposed to be over here with the goats, but those two lived together before they came here, so they're kind of buddies. And they just beat up on him all the time. He stands in the corner while they eat because they won't let him eat. So we just kind of let him be out here with the cows. I'm chores it's time for us to eat. What you eating? Quesadillas. Quesadillas with homemade salsa. Well I've been fiddling with this engine for it's been like a couple weeks now really. I'm not even sure how long it's been since I've been working on this thing. This video is taking me a long time to record. I can get it to run for short periods of time but I can't keep it running. So today we're just gonna completely tear this whole thing apart, start from scratch see if we can get it back up. We're gonna run a little time lapse of me doing that right now. If you're an expert at one of these, I need your help because I'm not sure that I'm doing this right. Not that I'm not doing it right, but I'm not sure exactly what's supposed to flow where. And there's one spot that it doesn't seem like anything's flowing and it should be. So I'm not sure if it's gonna work or not. So this little pin can come out. It's right on the side, right there. Um, if I spray carb cleaner in there, nothing goes through. It just comes right back in my face. Also, on the very, very bottom, you got the main one in the middle, but there's that little hole there that also seems like something should go through it, but nothing goes through. It looks like it might just be jammed. Hopefully I don't screw this up. I'm gonna poke at it with something and see what happens. We're gonna look this up, see if I can find anything. Well, I didn't find anything really useful on what that little hole is. Um, I think it's an idle vent or something like that is what it said. Um, couldn't find any specifications on whether it should have something flowing through it or not. But I did find that my float is supposed to be at 11 or 11 fourths and it was at a half inch. So I adjusted the float. Maybe that's all I need to do. We're gonna give this a try and see what happens. 
The difficult thing is, is I gotta readjust all of my little pins in here. So they gave me some specifications, hand tighten them and then turn them back. So this bottom one here, one and a half turns, one on the side, one turn. We'll see if that'll get the job done for us. It goes nothing. Well, it appears I still have a few minor adjustments to make, but it's actually running. So we got this one board run through just as a test. We can actually jump into working on this table and getting it finished now. So generator is done. Still we'll have to figure out how to connect it to the house if we need to do that. Really loud in here and I'm gonna have to open a door because I'm gonna choke to death with all this exhaust in here. Even though I've got all these vents up here, um, the main garage door is still open, or closed, so if I open that up, it should be a lot better. It's not too bad, but it's enough that it's annoying. So, does carbon monoxide go up or down? If it goes up, it'll go up and out those. If it goes down, it'll just sit on top of me and kill me. So, I'm gonna open the door so I don't die. That's enough for today. We'll see you guys next time.